Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my fellow YouTubers, Facebookians. Aries here with a video. I hope uh, Aaron helps out too. Today we're going to be talking about a few videos. Uh, later I got one called Justification, which Aaron came up with last night. This video is going to be short. So, unless Aaron wants to cue and do it first, I can try without botching up the words. Basically, plain and simply, is Rita wants to do a video about uh, doctors essentially uh, stealing from Medicare patients and Medicaid patients. Uh, it's particularly noticeable with transgendered issues. Uh, a lot of doctors will schedule you for a consultation because they'll bill Medicare for that, but they won't bill Medicare for the surgeries and they won't do your surgery or surgeries or whatever it is because they won't take Medicare for that particular thing. So, for instance, you could be going to a doctor about having, uh, um, you know, your tonsils out, and they might say, until you get tonsillitis, we won't do it for you, but thank you for the money, we'll charge Medicare for that, and we won't do the surgery for you unless you want to pay out of pocket, which we know you can. So, they'll schedule an appointment knowing good and well that they will not see you for the thing, and they don't care. It's money in their pocket, and that's all they care about. Uh, various doctors who do that that I know of offhand. Um, there's one out of Chicago that does uh, breast augmentation, apparently, for transgender people. Uh, she will see you for a uh, consultation. She will not take Medicare for the surgery, though. Uh, Dr. Shore. Another one that will end up doing that is uh, Dr. Uh, can't remember the name right now. Um, Qing U, Boston. Uh, oh yeah, Doctor uh, Spiegel for facial feminization. Doctor Spiegel for FFS says straight outright, you can come in. We'll do a consultation for you, but I don't take Medicare for surgeries. Well, why do you take it for consultations but not for surgeries? Uh, likewise, he'll take it for Medicaid patients in the state, but he refuses to do any surgery for anybody on Medicaid. Well, in that case, why are you seeing them for consultations? Isn't that just theft? You're charging them, you're charging Medicare or Medicaid, they're paying you, and you're doing nothing in return for it except for saying, we're very sorry, we can't do anything for you. Goodbye. So it's a 10-minute appointment, and they charge 600 bucks oh, for it. don't forget the other part of the theft ring, Aaron. I'm queuing him now, boss, when it comes to travel. Well... If you're on Medicare or Medicaid and you're going to say Dr. Short or Dr. Spiegel um, and you want to, you're hoping like heck they'll do your surgery and then you go and they tell you, oh sorry we can't do it because Medicare doesn't allow us to bill for it. You've just uh, not only ended up giving them tons of money but you probably spent the only money you can afford to travel on for the whole year and your one shot at getting it done for the year is gone. So they not only steal from you on one front, but they steal from you on another front. This is unethical, and doctors shouldn't be allowed to do this. Um, and that's why I'm not afraid of using Dr. Shore or Dr. Spiegel's name, because you need to be aware, don't go through them. Uh, they will only set up a consultation for you, and they will apologize full-heartedly that they can't do your surgery at this time, but they will bill you for it. Yeah, just for the consultation, which is theft. And that is nothing but stealing from you. So if you're on Medicare or Medicaid, be very, very cautious that they will actually do the surgery. Don't just say, oh, they're going to set a consultation. They're going to do my surgery. No, no, they might not. Heck, I, I was going in for a possible surgery, and doctor ended up having a consultation with me and said, oh, it's too complicated for me to do. Um, well, that's just a way of weaseling out of it. Uh, don't doctors forget. will do this. Don't forget, talking about doctors and stuff, the same doctor that weaseled out of his surgeries wanted to send us to a specialist, but she begged, borrowed, and pleaded what the same doctor could do out of another city, which is 160 miles round trip. That's 80 miles one way, 88, I think. So, you know, you get the play. And I said, oh, we can't do surgical procedures on transgendered people for breast augmentation because they're endocrine system 
is too complex. I've never heard that in my entire and, life. And by the way, if you need facts to back things up, I have seven people I have spoken to who have had consultations with Dr. Shore, and Dr. Shore has not done a single surgery on any of them, uh, and actually has told them, uh, we're very sorry, can't do this. So yeah, I have facts to back that up. Um, I have witnesses who have done it physically. Uh, we're supposed to be doing it in August, but we're going to cancel that appointment because we already know enough that it won't be done. Uh, with Dr. Spiegel, his nurse even set an appointment. Well, I know. Spiegel. Dr. Spiegel's nurse even called and said straight outright, we won't do the surgery, but we will set you for a consultation. So, um, yeah, that's coming direct from their nurse, that they will not do the surgery, but they will see you for a consultation. So, I'm not just slinging things around and slinging mud at somebody. Uh, I'm just giving the plain and basic truth. And doctors should not be allowed to do this. They see you for a consultation. They should pretty much have to do your surgery unless there's a damn good qualifying reason not to. Like, well, we found this and we can't do it with that. All right. You have a giant scar here and having to work with the scar tissue just to do this, blah, blah, blah. It's not something I'm capable of doing. You have to go to somebody who's much more skilled than I am. I could understand that. But just saying, oh, we don't take Medicare for the surgeries. Thank you for coming in. Have a wonderful day. That's just horrible to charge $600 to do that. Shame on those doctors who do that. They're uncaring. They're, in a way, in my opinion, anti-transsexual. If they're going to have you come in, spend like $3,000 to come in, and then charge you $600 for an appointment to ship you out the door right away. Why couldn't they just tell you this on the phone and save a whole trip and save $600? They, the thing is, this is the way that they can line their pockets. They see you for five minutes, they make 600 bucks. What a dream come true job that is. Heck, let's see if we can get you know uh, 30 of these patients in in an hour. I mean, you see, thir uh, that's uh, $18,000 for one hour of work. And you could just keep cycling them through. So, yeah, uh, I'd love to be a doctor doing that too. But that is unethical. Um, anyways, I don't know much else to say about it. Uh, Rita walked away. Um, I have a I told her I didn't really want to help her with these videos, but she's so bad about explaining things that she wanted me to explain, so here I am. All right, so, oh, sorry about that. So, the final bit is this. When Aaron and myself decided to um, set up a consultation with the one doctor, I'm not giving his name, we got a surgery date eight days later. Now, another thing that's interesting is for the breast augmentation, a woman basically set me up a consultation three days later is doing surgery for me there. So, so you see, some doctors are willing to take a chance and do it, but other doctors are using the fact that, well, we'll do a consultation, we'll see you, and by the way, we can't do it on the grounds that, you know, uh, as the lady said on the phone, there's no uh, I'll Medicare you, code. I'll tell you what, if I went to a doctor who told me we'll uh, see you for a consultation, then in the consultation they went ahead and told me, uh, I'm very sorry, but we can't take Medicare for this, I would turn around and sue them for the cost of my travel expenses because they gave false hope, uh, they lied to me, and I'd also insist on the bill being revoked. Um, I know it's small claims court, and they figure since you're out of state, you're not going to come and file. Because you got to file in a state in which the problem Yes, is but you can appeal through CMS, Center for Medicare and Medicaid yeah, Services, you, no. And if you want your transportation cost covered. Oh, no, you can only appeal the bill part, you know. But, again, you know how it is. You're making money hand over fist on consultations and not doing anything. And for a disabled person, you find five of those doctors five years in a row, you might not be able to get surgery for six or seven years, depending. And all this time, you're wasting every dime you got to try to get a surgery done. How horrible is that? 
especially when you're supposedly so depressed that you you think about suicide and you can't survive. You can't feel. You feel like you can't go outside, which I think is utter crap. Uh, I've known enough transgender people that when most of the transgender people I know say, oh, I can't work because I can't be around people because I'm not comfortable. It's a load of crap. But, you know, some there are some out there, I'm sure, that are very much like me, that are very introverted. And that's just personal feeling, though. Uh, I could, you know, uh, I won't go there right now. But uh, fact of the matter is... Um, you know, if people are supposedly like this, the doctors shouldn't be pushing them further down the drain. And that's what's happening. And that's disgusting and sad. And that's because, uh, unfortunately, Medicare made it so it's not an auto cutoff now. It's possible to get done. But the fact is it's so complicated, the doctors either A, aren't doing it, or B, they're not doing it. So there's a few out there who are willing to take a chance but eventually they'll get fed up and they won't do it either. Yeah, exactly. Because it's too much but of a hassle. The, the transgender people who just found out Medicare will cover it, who are like, my God, I can't afford it. Now Medicare is covering it. I'm finally going to get it done. They're running around like chickens with their heads cut off, thinking how wonderful. Celebration. You know, let, let's all have a good time. Uh, it's going to happen for me. You're getting your hopes up. Medicare's getting your hopes up by saying it's covered while the doctors are basically saying sorry can't help. So right now you can't force a doctor to do your surgery. Well, but they will only... gladly take your money for a consultation to tell you we won't do your surgery. Uh, exactly. And and on top of this, the other thing I want to say is sometimes when it comes to these procedures as Aaron didn't spill the other part out and is even if the doctors sit there and take your money for a consultation and don't give you a service, some transgender people out there, and Aaron will justify saying this, as he said it, will find someone who will take Medicare for say all female to male surgeries or all or male to female bottom surgery. And when they accumulate everything they need, female to male or male to female, they won't pay the other 20% if they don't have and an when advantage. 20% isn't paid over enough times, that's when the doctors say, I'm not taking it anymore because these patients aren't, help, uh, aren't paying. They're not paying and there's, uh, they're not worried about it because when you're on Medicare or Medicaid, medical bills don't count against your credit when you're trying to get into apartments. So what's it matter? Your credit's already ruined anyways. You're poor and there's just no money. So you let those medical bills all go to waste. That's what happens to 90% of people on Medicare and Medicaid. They refuse to pay. No, however, I've been paying my medical bills and I got two medical bills lined up to be paid off. Yay! And then and I the actually, next I, one is Blizzard's bill. And I'm actually low enough income. I usually end up... Uh, 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 qualified for grants and stuff that cover mine, but uh, when it comes to these surgeries, there's no grants that will cover your remaining bill because you can't afford it. You can't apply with the hospital and say, I can't pay my bill, what do I do? And they say, well, let us put it through and see if you get this grant or not. They don't do that for what's considered elective surgeries. And even though Medicare and the insurance companies don't re uh, may not recognize it as elective anymore and may say it's medically necessary, the hospital still see it as elective. And they won't apply you for the grant for it. And there you have it. So, just be on your guard, ladies and gentlemen. And this and isn't just about transgender care. It's about... But it's issues. mostly transgender. This is your transgender channel, isn't it? Uh, yes. So, um, basically, this is for transgender uh, care. And if you want to say we're wrong, yes, I know... Uh, uh, to if SS is watching, um, that you can force your doctor by telling them it's medically necessary and educating them. Unfortunately, educating doctors who have decided they are not taking it is not going to force them to do it. You could threaten lawsuit all you want saying you're uh, transphobic or whatever. It's not going to work because they're willing to do a consultation. Nothing says by law that they must take Medicare. You cannot force a doctor to do anything. 
You can't tell a doctor uh, that, uh, you know, that they have to do something for you. Um, it's like, it's not like Burger King. You don't go in and have it your way. You don't control the doctor. The doctor does as the doctor chooses. The doctor also does as the staff chooses. As we've learned recently, one doctor said, oh, I'd be glad to do it. The nursing staff turns around and says, Medicare won't cover it. We put it through enough times. Even though the doctor told you yes, yes, he's got a kind heart. Yes, he's willing to help you out. But unfortunately, we, are, we will not schedule it because we already know, and we're not going to let him get burned. So, um, yeah, even if the doctor's willing, you might end up having nursing staff that won't let you. Well, and you can't force them. But Mr. SS thinks that they can. Um, and that if, if that won't work, then he's got uh, Mr. E that he can call on immediately who can go in and force it uh, using legal action. Uh, it's not going to work. So, ladies... If you do think that we're wrong here, feel free to think that we're wrong. Feel free to tell everyone in our comments that you're wrong, or that oh. we're wrong. But the um, fact of the matter is, we've called so many doctors, we've talked to so many doctors, that it's, it's not something to get your hopes up on. Um, yes, I know your wishful thinking wants to not believe this, but heck, there's a doctor in Chicago... Uh, Dr. Schechter, uh, who some have heard of, uh, he has literally told at least two people I know of now that they are too disabled for surgery. So even if they have all the referrals, he will not do them. Also, another thing to keep in mind is the doctors have found another way out of doing it, particularly the bottom surgery doctors for uh, male to females, is they will tell you you have to have a hair pattern done of hair removal and that they can't do the surgery until then. And then you don't find this out until more recently. And it takes almost two years of appointments to make sure the hair is gone. So then the doctors won't touch you until then. So they've just now told you, sorry, we're not doing your surgery for two more years. By that point, maybe they either won't take Medicare or Medicare will pay the full price for it. That's what they're kind of hoping on and banking on. So you're going to find out that even though you have all your referrals in order, you're going to have to go back and do it. There's also that same doctor insists that all your referrals are good within two months. If they're older than two months, you've got to go back and do them again uh, and get new referrals. So this ends up causing some problems there too. It means that you might think that you can do it now, then you find out you got to do two years of hair removal before you can have it done, and then you have to get your things again and those doctors may have retired, so you may have started with another doctor, or they may have moved on and you have a new doctor now, or you lost that doctor for some reason, currently don't have one. You might not be able to get new referrals, or you have to wait two more years with their current therapist to get a referral from them because you need two years with that therapist. Uh, there's a lot of issues that these doctors are throwing out there to cause problems so that they can push you aside and say, sorry, can't help. All right, I uh, just want to say, um, right here, which I was talking to Aaron yesterday about it, talking about things. It says here, primary care physician, this is what Mr. SS keeps throwing around by trans equality. No national exclusion for transgender-related health care under Medicare. This means that coverage decisions for trans trans uh, transition Related surgeries will be made individually on the base of medical need and applicable standards of care by your primary care physician or yes. or therapist or psychologist. Now, let me put it this way. If you're trying to get FFS and you're trying to say that you're so dis uh, depressed and unable to do anything that you're going to kill yourself, etc., if you don't get it, and uh, therefore it's medically necessary, your primary care doctor does not have the ability to assess your mental health. That is not something that they do. It's out of their field of practice. If they wrote you a referral, they are now putting themselves liable to lose their license uh, because they say that you're qualified. If it comes back that Medicare says, why did you say that this person is qualified for facial surgery when 
they don't have any, you know, it, it's not a physical problem like you just had a lawnmower blade slice into your face or something and you need surgery to fix it. Um, or you're not, uh, they're not a therapist, they can't give you the depression thing. So why are they giving you a referral for this? Um, Again, Mr. SS and Mr. A, a smooth-talking doctor will be able to get out of it. And a doctor who truly loves you and thinks you're great and really looks forward to seeing you, and they come in and they want to give you a hug, and they're like, oh, it's so good to see you again. How are you doing? You might get a doctor like that to put their job at risk to give you a referral because they want to see good things happen for you. But if you have a doctor who really is indifferent to you and they come into the room and it's like, yeah, let's hurry up and get this appointment over with, and you're asking for something like that, they're going to just say, oh, I'm uncomfortable doing that. And you can't ram it down their throat and say, you must, or else. They'll say, <laughs> then, uh, or else, go find a new doctor. Because that's what's going to happen to you. But, you know, Mr. S thinks that uh, you can go ahead and just, you sit there with a plunger and tell your doctor, do it, 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 do it. And the doctor's going to put their job on the line and say, okay, here's a referral for facial surgery. Yeah, you need it now. Same with breasts. A doctor, a personal doctor doesn't have the ability to really say, oh, yeah, you need breasts. They might if you had a mastectomy due to cancer, but a transgender person has not had a mastectomy due to cancer. A transgender person does not currently have a spear sticking through their breasts or a javelin and saying, well, I, uh, you know, they got, they're going to have to be removed. The doctor says, okay. And then the doctor says, I'm going to recommend that you go and get breasts so that, you know, have them repaired. Uh, they can't do that so much for a transgender person without putting their job on the line. Now, a therapist can because the reason is a mental ailment. That is what code 302.85 is. It's a mental ailment. I'm sorry, this is not considered a physical deformity. This is still considered a mental issue. Even though now Medicare is allowing for it, they have not changed the classification from physical to men uh, mental to physical. They ha aren't saying that this is a genetic issue that you were born with. They're still saying this is your mind mentally screwed up. So it's just be thankful that they're willing to maybe cover but they're not really doing it yet because it's considered elective. I do want to make a other statement before we uh, sign off. Yeah, I've got to go to your point. Uh, yes. Uh, the other thing I'd like Eric's opinion on, and it irritates the hell out of me, there's two things. I was browsing the White House website, and they're trying to force the VA to cover everything. Oh, and... This is another thing, too. Um, those doctors that require hair removal realize that when you're on, uh, um, on Medicare or a disability, you're not going to be able to get it taken care of. Why? Hair removal, electrolysis, which is what they want done, is 95% of the time done by a beautician. A beautician does not hold a license as a doctor. A beautician also does not have the necessary paperwork filed to be able to bill Medicare or Medicaid, so you will have to pay full price. The average appointment cost is $50. When you start out, you usually need two appointments a week for the first, like, six months. So that's $100 a week or $400 a month, and most disabled people on Medicare cannot afford $400 a month for six months then $200 a month for the next six months, and then $100 a month for the next year. Um, Here's the petition, by the way. Yeah, okay, I better. get it. 100,000 people want the VA to cover sex changes. Wonderful, that's There's great. There's only about 300 people that signed it since July 1st. I'm sorry to say, but the taxpayers that see that is not going to sit there and pay for it. And that's, that's not the issue here, though. Mm. The issue here is the doctors are not on board. And you can't force them to be, and they are finding ways around things. And they're finding permanent solutions because they're giving tests that are uh, impossible to be done, such as the hair removal. It's not necessary. There is no tie doctor that requires hair removal from the crotch. And I even saw somebody on here, another trans person who was talking about it. I'm they went sorry. through... 
No, they went through a doctor for their surgery and they didn't have to have the hair removal down below. But most doctors are telling patients they need this. There are those who won't, but the Thai doctors don't do this. Um, most other doctors don't. So when a doctor's telling you that you have to, you don't have to. They could do the surgery without it. The thing is, they're finding a way out of doing it. So when you hear that, what that is is an excuse saying, I'm not doing your surgery. If you want to do this surgery, come back to me in two years uh, and, and keep your hopes up. They figure you're going to go find somebody else at that point. Or you'll give up. So, there you have it, everyone. The thing about Medicare, doctors, etc. Just be aware of your surroundings of what's going on. Me and Aaron's done enough research to know that it's not going to be easy to do this stuff. Because eventually, it's going to get... Uh, out of hand, or doctors are just going to stop doing it, even though Medicare or Medicaid's are paying for it. And a lot of doctors might just deal with not getting enough money for the surgeries, uh, or, you know, being shafted from the state Medicaid program paying, and, you know. Here's another but, thing. There's 600,000 transgender people in the country. Even the best doctor right now can't do more than 200 surgeries a year. Uh, there are only about five to six doctors, maybe seven in the United States, doing these surgeries. So you figure that's 1,400 a year. Uh, 600,000 and the number's growing every year. Uh, you think you have an opportunity to get your surgery done? Put your name in a frickin' barrel and roll it around and hope like heck your number's gonna be called. Because some doctors have a seven year wait list. And they're among the more expensive doctors out there, and they do not take Medicare. There, there's only like four doctors who take Medicare, possibly take Medicare. At least two of them will tell you to have hair removal. Uh, and the average one of them is only doing between 50 and 100 uh, surgeries a year. So you're talking only 200 people a year getting their surgeries. Uh, I just wanted to say, for the record, and as Aaron knows, I'm not going to give you... The doctor doing breast augmentation for me, or the gender reassignment. And that's you because that. hold on. Everyone will explain that. Well, the one, the one is because it's a trial, and Rita wants to be the trial case. And if other people know about it, they might try to steal our trial base uh, because they can go sooner, and then she'll be denied going through them. So she doesn't want to end up. And transgender people are like vultures. They they smell fresh meat, and they will pounce. Uh, I've watched it happen on numerous sites where they're like, this doctor's taking it. Then you try to call the doctor and it says, due to high call volumes, uh, uh, unexpected high call volumes, etc. We can't take your call at this time. You get a hold of them. They're like, things have been crazy here. Our phones are ringing off the hook. Uh, we haven't had time. I know at least one doctor that takes almost six months to get back to you due to vulturism. Um, so if Rita tells you where she's going, good chances are that the vultures out there will just try to pick off her spot before she gets there because they're ready to go right now because they're not truly disabled. There are a lot of falsely disabled out there who've got family and friends uh, or like one person I know has uh, uh, essentially a strange spouse that they live with but they're like, oh yes, we're not married. But that spouse basically holds all the money and does things. I know a couple that work under the table uh, and they claim disability. These are not disabled people. Unfortunately, the trannies, there's quite a few of them out there that are like that. Um, and they will have the money right now to go. And they would do anything to try to get it done free of charge. Uh, and if they can steal somebody else's spot, they will. Uh, like, oh, if this person's trying it on a trial basis. Ha, ah, you can't go for six months because you don't have the money. I can go right now. And it'll be, uh, the doctor might say, oh, well, I wanted a trial. The sooner the better, hey, this is great, I'll see you right now. Then they don't get it through, and the doctor says, well, my trial didn't go through. And we're like, but you said, yeah, but that's before I got somebody to try. It didn't work. I'm not getting paid for it. I'm sorry, I can't do you. Anyway, just I lost her ability to get it done. Exactly. Here's another thing about the surgery. The doctor 
that I'm going through does more female to male breast surgery removal than anything else. However, he does maybe 20 um, surgeries a year between phalloplasty and vaginoplasty. So you do the math. He's not well known because everyone worships Schechter, everyone worships Kuzon, everyone's planning to worship another doctor or Dr. Weiss. Oh, these and, doctors. And Dr. Weiss doesn't even do GRS. Uh, and he requires payment up front and then tells you this is his scam. He says, You have to pay me up front. It's two thousand dollars up front, then I will do you. And and Medicare will reimburse you. But do you have a license to be able to send to Medicare and say, hey, can you reimburse me for this? Medicare does not reimburse an individual. Medicare reimburses a doctor. That means Dr. White should be saying, oh, yes, when Medicare pays, if they pay, I will reimburse you. What he does, uh, says and what his nurses say is Medicare will reimburse you, which means that Medicare does pay and he's just taking double payment. You don't get paid at That's all. That's how it happens on this one list of doctors, that, a Medicare list out there. Then they mostly say that, pay us, we'll reimburse you. But no one has the money stacked up and to do the that. The other thing is these doctors don't realize that you can't save up $5,000 up front, pay them $5,000. Because if you make a chunk payment like that, you've just proven that you're frauding Social Security, which says you can't have savings of more than 2000 now that's if you're disabled. If you're a senior, you're allowed to have savings. But you don't get Medicare until your savings is gone. You uh, you have to be on Medicaid or pay your own. So, um, yeah, if you're a senior and you're on Medicare, you can't have savings over 2000 either. But the doctors seem to think you might have money laying around that you can give. Um, if you have family that's willing to pay it for you, that's all right. But, uh, and then you get reimbursed and reimburse your family. But there's a good chance that if your family pays that, you'll be investigated for fraud by Social Security. So, again, it's a very touchy situation. Anyways, we should end this video. Yes, anyways, please add subscribe if you like. Please post comments, leave feedback, suggestions. Thank you. And uh, may God bless you all.